So here we've got a pair of PSXRs for repair and the top one's actually, you can see uh, there, it's a PSXR2 uh, and this one apparently failed with, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of smoke and uh, uh, a bang, you know, so something drastically gone wrong in there and the bottom unit there, just when it was connected to an amplifier, the amplifier didn't recognise it, so maybe something gone wrong with output levels in that one. So we'll, we'll look at these, we'll do the repairs on these and service them. Uh, what we're also going to do is we'll compare the two. You know, we've got a chance here where we've got the PSXR2 and the original PSXR, and we'll just see what the differences are. Um, and then another thing we're going to do here is we're going to do a little test box so that it just makes the testing of these units uh, a bit easier for me. Uh, so we'll look at how we develop that. But let's get on, we'll look at this PSXR2 first, we'll get the covers off that and see what's going wrong. Alright, let's take a look at this PSXR2 uh, first of all here. And the first obvious thing with this one is it, it smells terrible. There's, there's a clear smell of blown up uh, capacitors going on in here. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously we're looking for something like that. But when we look at the board here, it's all very clean. You know, all these, the main capacitors here all look healthy. All the level ones look good. And there's no, there's no kind of burning or damage to the board that's obvious in any way. So I stared at this for a while and uh, was a little bit puzzled given the, given the strong smell that I couldn't see anything. And then we, you know, we look at the base plate and usually if something's gone wrong you can see some residue of some explosion there, um, but nothing to see. Um, there is a little indication here on the back, we've got a little spot of something going on there. And then when we turn it over and we actually look at the outside, um, we can see clear residue along there. Uh, so that's coming from this area back here and uh, when we look close we can see that we've got this component here, mystery component that's uh, wrapped in heat shrink and tied on with a cable tie and uh, this is a class X capacitor uh, and that class X means it goes across the supply line and it's, it's just a little simple filter. We'll take a look at some text in a minute as to what this is. But this is what this is going to be. This is a this is just a capacitor here that's uh, been tacked on as a kind of crude filter. I mean, I mean I'd rather see an, an IEC type uh, filter installed here with, uh, you know, a bit more effort. But uh, this, this is just a kind of simple attempt at some filtering here. Um, so let's take a quick look at some text and then we'll get that thing out. Have a little look at what's going on. So here's here's some text here. You know we can we can look at this uh, separately here. But class X capacitor, uh, it goes across the supply line. It's it's really for some filtering, um, EMI, RFI. It, you know the question of whether it does any, it makes any significant difference here is is a would be a valid question. But um, anyway, these these class of capacitors they're they're made in a certain way so that if they do go wrong they do so in a safe way. So that's the whole deal here. We've got class X capacitors and class Y and they're obviously having to deal with very high voltages and uh, uh, spikes on the mains and all the rest of it. So they're kind of specialised devices um, for that. So that's what's going to be inside this heat shrink. And uh, let's just take it apart now and see what we've got. Right, let's see if we can get this, this thing out here. So we'll just snip this cable tie to start. And we can see clearly in the back of that where that's ruptured. So that's what's happened there. That guy's uh, given up. And uh, so you can see that's X2. And I uh, don't know what this is going to be, 680 something. We'll have to try and figure out what the value is of that thing. But let's just chop that out of the, the heat shrink there and see where we go. Not much left to that. 
Let's clean it up a bit. Let's see if we can read what's on there a bit better. Right, we can see now that's uh, 68 narrow and class X2. And if we quickly take a look at what the X2 means. Uh, there we are there, subclass X2. So less than two and a half kilovolts peak pulse is uh, what that guy is uh, rated for. So obviously something's gone uh, drastically wrong here and I suspect we're going to see more of these failing. Uh, so we'll see see how that goes over time. Um, but we'll remove that now and I want to dispose of it because it's really, uh, the, the, the stink that's coming from this thing's pretty horrendous. So I really want to get it uh, removed as quickly as possible. So we'll get that done. Uh, we'll get a replacement for that. And then we'll go and do our usual usual service now this thing all these low level caps will be replaced in here right so i've got that guy out here and i put it in a, a little bag here to to contain the the stink uh, i mean the smell that comes from these guys is, is very different from your standard electrolytic so that's a bit of a a giveaway as well as to where the problems can be um so that's uh, that's the deal standard reefa reefa x capacitor here that's gone wrong so these reefer capacitors, they're actually quite famous for failing in this way. Um, and uh, let's take a look at some text here. Um, and generally it's in older equipment, you know, the, the, the problem with these capacitors is well known now. And so generally it's not, you don't find them in modern, modern equipment. So it's kind of surprising to see it in the PSXR2 being, being relatively new. Um, and so the, the deal is here that if, if the unit's been sitting for a while, what happens is these capacitors form some micro cracks that absorb moisture. And then when you turn the turn the thing on again, they just blow up. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can see the pictures here. They're not too different from what we've experienced in this unit. So very, very well known and uh, well documented as well. You know, there's plenty, plenty of stuff around on this. Um, so we'll be looking for some alternative uh, uh, brand to, to replace this part. Um, uh, and as I say, we're going to see more of this. If this is what's been fitted in the in this unit, we're going to see more of these happening in the not too distant future, I think. Anyway, let's uh, move on and we'll look at what else we need to do here. Now, as we mentioned, uh, this unit looks, looks superb inside, very, very clean. Um, and so you think, well, that's us done. We just need to replace that and we're good. But um, if you go down and you look at some of the low level electrolytics um, here and there you are there. Looks brand new, but we've got an ESR, a sort of six maybe there. So that guy's had its day. And again, the usual business of, of it sitting next to this heat sink here. And uh, similar with this guy here. It's a little bit better there, just under the three, um, a little bit further away from the heat maybe. Uh, and so we'll, we'll need to go around and replace all of these before we're done here. So we'll get that done, we'll get a replacement cap in there, and then this should be good to go again. All right, while later then we've got our new uh, filter cap in here. We've got the heat shrink on the cables there, and we'll just we'll put another bit of heat shrink over the whole thing. Uh, and put that back in as it was before. Uh, the main board's been recapped as well, uh, so that's us. Um, so we'll just get this back together now and then we can look at doing some testing on this unit. So in a, a previous video we looked at how we, we, we test a PSXR to make sure it's uh, working over all the range of uh, options that it might need to do. Uh, and that, you know, involved a number of DMMs and uh, just nuisance connections and, uh, you know, loading the thing up and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that, it's fine, but, uh, you know, it just gets to be a bit of a nuisance every time you, you know, you want to test one of these things and you have to set that up. So I kind of want to do something uh, self-contained and simpler here. And I've got a, a bunch of old school analog meters here. Uh, I'm going to use this old project box here. This was used for something else previously. So we'll get these meters and uh, various switches and things installed there. And then the deal is when we're looking to do testing on a PSXR, we just plug it in here and we can uh, request all the various voltages and make sure that we're getting the results we want. Uh, so that's the plan. I've been meaning to do this for a while. Uh, 
and uh, so we'll just get this, uh, we'll get these uh, holes punched out for the various items here and start to start to assemble this. So here's our little test box uh, complete then and uh, the the two top meters these give the show the the plus and minus rails of the PSXR and then the this uh, 5 volt meter here shows the control line which is PSXO uh, or it lets us measure the battery there's a battery inside here that we need to power some of the logic uh, so we've got a power switch and this here allows us to flip between measuring the PSXO and the battery and then we've got our two fixed uh, rails there that we can toggle between or we've got the variable uh, level that we can control via this pot. So that's that's the basic functionality. Um, these meters are, are pretty rubbish, you know, they're not, they're not in any way accurate. Um, but of course we can plug a DMM into, into this as well if we wanted to look at the numbers more carefully. Uh, but it, it's good enough for a, for a sort of functional test of these things. Um, let's just take a look inside. Uh, it's all pretty simple. A um, couple of load resistors and uh, we've got an op amp here to drive the 5 volt meter just because, uh, as I say, they're rubbish and the the impedance of that thing was pretty low so I needed a bit of current to drive it and that's what the op amp's doing for us. Uh, the battery holder in here uh, and that's that's us really pretty simple uh, but it just it takes some of the headache out of testing these things. Um, so we'll go ahead now and we'll uh, test the PSXR that was smoking uh, earlier on. Right, here's our repaired uh, PSXR connected up to this little test box here and uh, if we uh, power on uh, and we've got our uh, settings here set to a fixed 35 volts and we can see we're about 35 volts on the on the meters there and that's with a PSXO voltage of near 5 volts. If we flip to 21, that's PSXO near zero volts and we've got about 21 volts on our on our meters there which is correct and then on the variable side um, it's not a spec to operate over this range but we've got about 15 16 volts at the low end there and we can wind up to about 30 so we've got that variable variable thing there um, uh, that's working just fine so uh, test box is working fine and this PSXR is working fine as well, you know, it's all, all uh, behaving as normal. So I think we're good to go with this one now. Um, we'll go and look at the other one that uh, wasn't behaving properly when connected to, uh, it was an X power it was connected to and it just wasn't uh, working at all. Uh, so let's go and see how that behaves. Right, here's the second, uh, and this is the original uh, PSXR. Um, and uh, so power on and we're, we're you know, got the green light and everything. Um, we can immediately see though that we don't have a positive rail. The negative rail is okay. Um, and if we go for fixed, so we're getting our 35 volts there. We're getting our 21 volts and uh, the variable stuff's all working as well. So the negative rail is fine, we've not got a positive rail. So let's go and investigate why that is then. Alright, looking inside and uh, you can see the problem immediately. Um, the, the deal was that this PSXR was connected to another unit that went wrong and uh, we dealt with that. Um, but obviously this the PSXR has been taken out at the same time um, and this fuse has burst the fuse in the positive rail so it's pretty simple pretty simple problem at this end um, I've checked the transistors they're okay so hopefully if we replace that fuse we'll be back in action here uh, I do see that uh, this unit's also got the reefer capacitor in here so we'll change that um, I didn't I didn't think that the original PSXR had this. Um, but uh, apparently they do, so we'll we'll deal with that. We'll do all our usual capacitor changes, and uh, we'll, as I say, we'll be back in action here. So let's just do let's just deal with this then. All right. So that's these. Both of these units are are repaired, and uh, we've replaced all the low level caps, and uh, they're both working fine now. So that's that's good. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier though, I've got a chance here to put the, the two units side by side, the P6R2 alongside the original unit, and see if we can see what the differences are and uh, hey, you, you know how we actually, how do we justify the, the price difference in the actual new model. Uh, so let's, we'll take a look at what Cyrus say first of all. So here's their web page here, and uh, it talks about redesigning a classic. So there's some suggestion there that there's been some redesign effort going on. Um, and then when we look at the text, it's pretty brief here. Um, it just talks about building on what's been before um, and the latest improvements bring power supply filtering that's lifted from elsewhere in the range. Um, so that's all they're saying. It's not a big long story, but they are saying there's been some, re or they're suggesting there's been some redesign and a bunch more filtering. Um, let's uh, let's then take a look at what we find inside. And when we look at the units, the, the, the main board is exactly the same revision, so there's no changes to that board. Um, Component-wise, we can see that the PSXR2, these capacitors are 10,000 micro, as opposed to the 7000 that was in the original unit. Um, we can see that these are physically smaller, so you, you, you do then question if there's some other spec that's maybe compromised on these, uh, these parts here. Uh, but that's the only difference on the board, uh, otherwise they're, they're identical. Um, and so where, where, where do we see the, the other, any other changes then? And what we've got here is we've got these clip-on ferrite cores that are on the output of the mains transformer, and then the, the DC output here. Uh, and these are these are these are just clipped on, and this is what we're talking about is filtering. Um, we've added these uh, components here, um, and that's really the only difference I can see. Um, and the, well, you could argue that these are these are super expensive and do magic things. Um, uh, let's then uh, take a take a quick look at uh, what these things cost. So uh, here we are here, and these are readily available items, everyday use items in the in this industry, uh, and that you know they're meant to be retrofitted onto any any cable. That's the whole idea that they just clip over an existing cable. And uh, normally you find them on switching power supplies and stuff stuff where there's going to be some high frequency stuff kicking around. And you're trying to trying to tame some of that. I really question, you know, the validity in this application here, um, or the or the benefit rather. Um, I, I think it'd be very very hard to quantify any difference uh, that these would make. Um, and when we look at the price and volume here, we're looking at seventy three pence uh, each. Um, so by the time you add VAT, you know, for for two of these per unit. You're talking less than two pounds material cost difference, uh, and yet these these units are, you, you know, the PSXR2 is almost twice the price of the original unit, so um, quite uh, mind boggling. And you know what's kind of happened here is we've we've made a small change. So yes, we've made a change, and that justifies a new a new revision of model, and then that justifies the price uh, difference as well. But uh, in reality, you know, if you've got a PSXR1, you're, you know, you're not really losing out here. So that, that's us. Uh, we'll, we'll just get the covers on these units now and we can uh, wrap this one up. Hey, right, that's our PSXRs back together and ready for, ready for return. Um, so yeah, quite interesting to see the exploding capacitors there. And then just looking at the differences between the two units. And then of course we've got our... A nice wee test unit here that you know was pretty pretty useful actually. Even when we looked at that second unit there, and we immediately saw that the positive rail was down before even taking the covers off. So I think this will be a, a useful wee uh, gadget as we as we go on. Um, so yeah, wrapping up here. Uh, no music to finish today, but there's our PSXRs all working just fine.